Hello and welcome to English Digest. I'm Seb, and I'm Elsie. How are you doing today, Seb? Oh, I'm hanging on in there. It's almost time for my final exams, so I've been studying a lot recently. 都在读书哦，加油 ！Next month you'll have summer break, right? Yes, I can't wait to get out of the classroom and relax. Maybe travel for a bit. What did you do on your summer vacations? I worked and worked. More students go to 补习班 on their summer vacations. Wow, Taiwanese students sure have to work hard, don't they?、Uh-huh. It seems like studying never stops here. Never. It seems like it's the only thing that Taiwanese students can do. In Europe, different countries take different approaches to education. In Spain, for example, people often send their kids to English learning centers, kind of like Busiban,、mm. or summer camps when they aren't in school. Though kids get much longer vacations than they do in the UK or I think Taiwan. I remember when I was in Spain, people normally finished for summer vacation maybe in May or the beginning of June, and they would come back at the end of September. So it's a、wow. long, long like three break. Three months or even four months. Three or four months of summer vacation. Finnish kids, Finlandish children, don't start school until they are seven years old. Apparently, that's because people believe it's important that children have time to just be children, to play and be creative before they start studying and preparing for exams and learning English. Can you imagine an education system like that in Taiwan? No, I wish we could have this kind of education system. Because students here are really, really 辛苦、mm. so 辛苦 Yeah, they really have it tough, don't they?、Mm-hmm. Well, guys, if our discussion has got your interest, you're going to be very curious about today's translation class. For our first sentence, we're going to be taking a look at education systems, Taiwan 教育 We'll also be discussing a statistic that I'm sure you'll all have an opinion about. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so our first sentence for translation is: High school students in Taiwan spend an average of 9.5 hours in school per day, which is more than any other country in the world. Wow, for real? That's such a long day. It sounds like kids must have to get up at the crack of dawn. 一天两周要起床 Do you really have such long school days in Taiwan, Elsie? 是的，而且真的一天两周要起床 Oh,、uh, that's horrible. Yeah, they have to get to school around seven thirty, I guess.、Mm. Some students even have to get up at five or six in the morning. I can understand that, you know, because in the UK we did get to start later, but because in the winter in the UK the days are so short. We would get up before the sun rose, and we would、oh. go home after it set. So when we were not studying, it was always night time. Right, but how、It's、many hours、sad. do you have to stay? In not、school? nine and a half hours. <laughs> I think it was seven. Seven hours, pretty long、yeah. too, actually. It's quite a long day,、hmm. but it was less than nine and a half. So, 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 每天平均在校时间九点五小时，这高于世界任何一个国家，这是一个事实。所以呢，时态我们要用现在简单时来描述。Mm-hmm. So apparently, the statistic was reported back in 2016 by Wang Haoyu, a politician from Taoyuan. Wang compared the average high school hours of countries around the world and found that Taiwanese high schoolers spent, on average, more time in class than kids in any other part of the world. Similar education systems included those of China and South Korea, where kids spent nine hours and eight hours in class, respectively. Can you guess what one of the lowest averaging countries was? 哪个国家的学生上课时数最少哦 ？Finland? 芬兰吗？ No, it's not Finland. In fact, it's even further away from Taiwan than Finland. It's Argentina. Argentina, Argentine. Yes, Argentinians spend about four or four and a half hours in high school. Okay, so you know they're lucky. They are very lucky. They have short 
school days. I wish I could only be in school for four hours a day. Right. Hmm. 好了，所以呢，我们如果要写在校时间，那就是在学校所花费的时间，可以用 spend time in school. 同样的呢，也可以用 spend 加时间，再加上 at work 或是 at one's job 来表示你在工作的时候花的时间，也就是你的工时。So, for example, Janice spent four hours at her job training other employees to use new software. 代表 Janice 这个人呢，花了四个小时的工作时间训练其他员工来使用新的软体。Exactly. There's actually an English expression that can help you remember the multiple uses of spend. Time is money. 时间就是金钱 Mm-hmm. We normally use this to mean that time is precious and wasted time is wasted opportunity. The other interesting thing about that is both time and money can be spent or wasted. So you can waste time or you can waste money. But let's not waste any more time talking about idioms. Why is the word average important in this sentence, Elsie? Average 代表平均。那除了我们用 an average of 的用法之外呢，也可以用 on average。那另外呀、啊、，average 也可以直接做动词哦，表示平均为点点点。所以呢，这边一个例句给同学喽。About eighty thousand people on average attend this famous university's football games each season。代表每一季平均约有八万人参与这所知名大学的足球赛。再来一个例句喽。Ryan's weight averaged seventy kilograms when he was a wrestler, but now he's usually closer to seventy-five kilograms. Ryan 在还是个摔跤选手的时候啊，平均体重是七十公斤，但现在他多半偏向七十五公斤。If you read a lot of news stories, you'll see that journalists love to talk about averages between countries. But why? When we calculate an average, we normally work out that the central or the most common value of something. So, for example, in 2019, Taiwanese workers had an average of 168 working hours per month. Some Taiwanese people will have worked less than that. Others much more, but looking at the average lets us know the general experience of all Taiwanese people. It also allows us to compare what work culture is like in Taiwan versus in other countries. For example, Taiwanese workers worked an average of 168 hours per month in 2019, while UK workers had an average of 161 hours. Therefore, we can guess that Taiwanese working days are normally longer than those in the UK. What do you think, Elsie? Are Taiwanese working days too long? Hmm, it depends. Different jobs have different working hours. 但是你刚刚说平均一百六十八个小时，对不对 ？It's really shocking. Yes,、mm. that's more than forty hours a week. So、right. that is more than working from nine to six. 好恐怖，大家辛苦了。再来呢，我们看到 any other country 代表任何一个国家，在这边呢，必须要加上 other 来把台湾。与本身以外的其他国家区分开来，不然就会出现自己跟自己比较的状况。我们来看这个例句哦 ：London is bigger than any city in Taiwan. 这边呢，因为伦敦本身就不在台湾城市的范围之中，所以啊，在比较的时候，你不需要加上 other 来把伦敦区分开来。不过呢，这边有另外一个句子，同学们看一下哦 ：London is bigger than any other city in the UK. 在这个句子当中，因为伦敦本身就是英国的一个城市，所以在比较的时候啊，你必须要加上 other， 让伦敦跟其他英国的城市区隔开来，避免伦敦跟自己一起比较。What this sentence has shown us is a really good tool if you ever have to use English to write a report or a news article. Comparison is a great way of showing why what you are saying is important. If we just said that Taiwanese students study 9.5 hours a day, people might not be able to understand whether that's a lot of hours or not. By comparing Taiwan to other countries, though, we understand that 9.5 hours might be too many for most people. Using comparative structures in our translation exercise isn't the only way you can emphasize importance, though. Looking back at Elsie's example, we could also say that London is the biggest city of its kind. When something is the biggest of its kind, nothing else in that category is larger than it. So Malaysia's Petronas Towers, for example, are the tallest towers of their kind because they are twin towers and they are the tallest twin towers in the world. Other buildings are taller, but no twin-towered buildings reach a greater height. Here's another example. 
the common ostrich is the largest animal of its kind. Right. So let's move on to the second sentence now. Students' lives are filled with schoolwork, and this seriously reduces the effectiveness of their learning. Wow. I really feel sorry for you guys. You know, this reminds me of a study they did about the U.S. The U.S. has shorter school days, but they have a lot. Of extracurricular activities, you know, like music class, sport class, and they did a study a couple of years ago about how this was really bad for their ability to learn. Wait, is it bad? It's bad.、That? Really? Yes, because students were getting up at, or in this study, some students were getting up at five a.m. for sport practice, and then they had、Maybe、school to practice soccer. Yeah, and then go to school, and then music class, and then homework, and then extra projects, and all of this meant that they were not getting enough sleep. And having enough sleep is very important,、right. and having enough rest is very important if you are going to be able to focus、mm. and to learn properly. So here we see a similar problem happening in a slightly different way. So people having too much schoolwork and too much time in school, and this apparently reducing the effectiveness of their learning. So sentence two is our assertion. It's adding information that helps understand the importance of sentence one. It's telling us what it means for these students to be going to school for an average of nine point five hours a day. They must really have a lot of schoolwork if their lives are filled with it. How do we translate this sentence, Elsie? 这句话的中文是呢，学生的生活被课业填满，而这严重降低了他们的学习成效。那翻译的时候啊，我们要用的时态是现在简单式，因为它也是一个 fact， 一个事实。那这里呢，我们看到英文里面我们用 are filled with， 代表被点点点填满。主动的用法是 fill A with B， 表示 B 充满 A。尤其强调呢，是因为外力介入而达到满载的状况哦。另外一个意思相近的片语是 be full of， 表示充满着。那这个是表示主词本身就充满着某物，跟外力是没有关系的。So for example， the kids' rooms are full of books and toys， so they always have something to do。孩子们的房间充满了书本和玩具，所以他们总是有。事情可以做。Mm、hmm. If we really want to emphasize the severity of Taiwan's education system, we might want to say that school kids' lives are dominated by schoolwork. When we talk about someone's life being dominated by something, that means that they have no no time to do anything else. Schoolwork is so demanding for Taiwanese students that they have no time for other pursuits. We could also say that their lives revolve around schoolwork. Revolve means to turn or move in a circle around something, like Earth revolves around the sun. If your life revolves around one activity, then it's the only thing you do. Revolve around 也是一个很好的用法哦，它代表的是绕着点点点打转。那这边学生们绕着的是课业打转，也就是在学校要完成的工作。我们会说 school work 跟回家作业 homework 是不同的哦。那如果是家事，在家里面要从事的这些事情，比如说打扫啦等等的，我们叫做 housework。例句，我们这边看到的是呢 ，Marina hates doing housework, so she hires someone to clean her home for her. Marina 讨厌做家事，所以她雇人来替她打扫房子。Mm, I miss that. You know, I used to live in China, <laughs>、uh-huh. and in China, did you have a helper? A lot of apartments have helpers. When you、really? rent an apartment, you have somebody who comes maybe once a week and they clean your house for you.、Mm-hmm. Maybe not in places like Shanghai, but in smaller cities or more rural cities where it's cheaper, you normally can get somebody to do that.、Nice. And it was so great not having to clean my own、Why? house. Why? I wish I had one. I know, but I can't.、Uh, I can't afford one in Taiwan. <laughs> I can't. I think、either. it would be much more expensive. Um, so going back to the sentence, schoolwork is definitely a big part of every kid's life in Taiwan, and it's not just because of the long high school hours. One of the things that surprised me most when I moved to Taiwan was the number of children and teenagers that study in cram schools. You know, Busi Ban. In the UK, kids almost never attend cram schools unless they are about to take an important exam or are really struggling with a school project. The culture is very different here. A study conducted last year by the Professor Huang、uh, Kunghui Education Foundation found that roughly half of Taiwanese people believe that it is important that students take extracurricular classes after school. 
Only a third thought that cram schools weren't necessary. What do you think, Elsie? Have attitudes changed since you were little? Um. Well, no. I think Bushiban can help students who don't know how to study on their own. But if the students can do that, they can definitely study at home. But if they don't know how, or they want to learn more but don't know how to get more learning resources, then I think they can join Bushiban. Mm-hmm. 嗯，那这边呢，我们看到学习成效应该要怎么说呢？学习成效不受影响，成效要用的是 effectiveness， 它是源自形容词 effective， 有效的。那学习成效也可以用 learning effectiveness 来代表。那我们这边要注意的是啊，我们要写的是学习的成效性，要用的是 effectiveness 这个字，而不是 effect， 因为 effect 它代表的是影响。You know that's a good point that our translation is making about schoolwork. More is not necessarily better, especially when we're in the classroom. As I see it, people in general, but especially kids, can only pay proper attention for a certain amount of time. I read recently that most adults only have an attention span, or 专注时间长度 of thirty to forty minutes, and some studies even suggest that that number is shrinking due to social media and phone use. So, can you really expect kids to pay full attention and try their hardest at school if they're in school for nine and a half hours? It's a bit ask much to ask, don't you think? True. 太长的学习时间呢，学生容易疲劳，专注度也会不足。So let's keep our fingers crossed. Hope in the future there will be a better education system in Taiwan. Hmm. All right. I think it's time we took a quick break, and then we'll be right back with our second translation exercise. Part B, single sentence. Sentence one. With translation two, we're going to be stepping out of the classroom finally and onto public transportation. You know, trains, buses, etc. Now, I'm sure you'll all have noticed, but something has changed considerably about Taiwan's public transport culture over the past year. Can you guess what? 是什么改变了台湾的大众运输文化？ Hmm. You mean wearing masks? Hmm.、Mm-hmm. Yep.、Yeah. Face masks. Face it's, masks. It's now mandatory, be yada, to wear face masks on public transportation. This rule came into effect after the onset of the COVID nineteen pandemic, and that's also where our translation comes in. Sentence one reads. Although the government began appealing to the public to wear masks on public transportation last February, violations were still observed from time to time. 虽然政府于去年二月开始呼吁民众搭乘大众交通工具的时候应该佩戴口罩，但是违规的行为仍屡见不鲜。那我们的时态呢？要用的是过去式，描述过去发生的事情。那这边呢，我们看到呼吁、力劝，应该要怎么样来说呢？除了用 appeal to 之外，也可以用 call on 或者是 urge 这些字来表达，强力号召、要求某人去做某事的意思。For example, the teacher urged her students to begin working on their projects as soon as they could. 这位老师力劝他的学生尽可能提早开始准备他们的报告。Hmm. Urge. I like that. Urge and appeal are just two of many asking words that can help add color to your sentences. When we urge someone to do something, we emphasize the importance of that thing. We might also plead with them too. Plead, as you might have noticed, is very similar to the word please, and it means to beg for something. Normally, because you are powerless or desperate. For that reason, we don't say that teachers or governments plead with people, but students can plead with their teachers. Like in our example sentence, the students pleaded with the teacher not to give them any homework. So the government has called upon people to respect face mask wearing rules. Has everyone been listening? 当然有不遵守的人呐、啊，所以呢，违规行为我们会看到，我们要用的字是 violation， 它是源自动词 violate， 意思是违背、违反法律规则。那违规者的英文是 violator， 
，字尾是 o r 啊，特别注意。For example, the police. Officer explained that he had pulled Elaine over for a traffic violation. 那位警员解释，他是因为 Elaine 违反交通规则才拦停他。Mm-hmm. You mentioned, Elsie, that people can violate rules. For our face mask sentence, we could also say that they disregard them or flout them. When you disregard a rule, you ignore it. While if you flout it, you deliberately break it. So there are both ways of saying break the rules. So disregard a rule 代表忽略规则，忽视规则 Flout a rule 代表刻意打破规则，故意不遵守。所以这边都可以用。那屡见不鲜，也就是不时。会被看到，所以呢，我们可以用 be seen or be observed from time to time. So not everyone has been following the rules. So what has the government done about it? Sentence two has the answer. In response, the government strictly implemented pandemic prevention regulations last April that enabled transportation companies to fine violators a maximum of fifteen thousand NT dollars and deny them service. Fifteen thousand NT dollars is a lot of money. Five thousand five. Mm-hmm. It sounds like the government is trying to dissuade people from breaking the rules. When we dissuade someone from an action, we convince them not to do it. How is the government dissuading people from breaking the rules again, Elsie? 政府当然是要严格执行防疫规定喽，所以呢，对此，政府于去年四月严格执行防疫规定，让大众运输业者可以对违者开罚最高新台币一万五千元，并拒绝再送。OK， 那这边的时态呢？我们也是一样用过去式描述过去发生的事情。那这边我们要说的对此，也就是回应某事，我们也可以用 in response to 来表示针对某事做出回应。So for example, many countries have cut trade with Myanmar in response to the military's terrible actions there. 许多国家断绝与缅甸的商业往来，以回应其军方可怕的行动。Mm, cutting trade. When we with that word, we could also say that they implemented sanctions. Now, sanctions are special rules or special limitations that we put on countries or governments when that country or government is behaving very badly. So there is a lot of violence in Myanmar, which is being carried out by the military there, and so there are sanctions on Myanmar at the moment. So the sentence says that in response to rule violations, the Taiwanese government said that public transport companies would be able to fine non-mask wearers up to fifteen thousand NT dollars, which is a lot of money. However, it seems that people will only be fined if they do not heed staff requests to put on a mask. When we heed a request, we agree to the request. So what I'm saying is that if I'm riding the MRT without a mask and the station masker A master asks me to put a mask on, but I refuse. Then I could receive a hefty fine, a large fine. Now, the, another thing which is good to remember is most of the stations in Taipei, at least, have masks with them. So if you forget your mask and you want to get the MRT, you can just go to the customer service desk at your station and ask for a face mask, and、How、they will、nice. give you one to use on the train. I think I have done that before. I've done that too, because <laughs> sometimes you don't. Plan on going on the MRT, and then you need a face mask. Yeah, and they gave、mm-hmm. me this paper face mask. Yeah, they're not the best face masks, but it's at least something to help you、right. be safe. Okay, 那这边我们要说到严格执行要怎么样表示呢？我们可以说 strictly implemented. 那除了 strictly 之外呢，也可以用 rigorously 或是 rigidly 来代替。那动词 implement。可以用 enforce 或是 impose 或者是 carry out 来替换。So, for example, the new soldiers trained rigorously to become stronger and more skilled in battle. 新兵们接受严格的训练，以变得更强壮，而且更有战斗技巧。还有一个例句哦 ，The cruel leader imposed strict new laws on the people and jailed those who opposed him. 也就是呢，那位残酷的领导人对人民施用严厉的刑法，并把反对他的人关进监狱。You know, personally, I think that's quite reasonable to find people who refuse to wear masks. We all need to do our bit to prevent the pandemic, right? Right. What do you think, Elsie? Of course, we have to do that. So, 呢，遵守防疫规定是非常重要的。那防疫规定呢，就是字面上所呈现的。
疫情预防的法规，因为剧中啊所提到的疾病是目前流窜全球的 COVID-19， 所以疫情这个字我们必须要用 pandemic， 指的是盛行于全世界的大型流行病。那至于。防范什么的规定？常见的用法是 prevention regulation， 例如 air pollution prevention regulation， 指的就是空气污染防治法。那再来呢？我们看到最高，也就是最大值的表达方式，我们要用的是 maximum。它在这边用的是名词哦，相反字就是 minimum， 表示最小值。那两个字都可以当形容词来使用。For example, for this paper, you need to write a minimum of three thousand words on your chosen topic. 这份报告你必须针对你选定的主题写至少三千个字。Mm、hmm. Right. That's something we should pay attention to. When we say that people can be fined a maximum of fifteen thousand NT dollars, we mean that that is the highest amount of money the government can fine them. If you break the rules, you might actually pay less. So recently, in a ho- in a hospital in Gaoshang, a worker there was only fined three thousand NT dollars for refusing to wear a mask. I think that how much money you have to pay might def- depend on what you do exactly and how dangerous or ignorant you are being. Right. 那再来呢？这边还可以拒绝再送乘客哦。所以呢，从客运业者的观点来看，就是呢，拒绝对违者提供服务。所以我们可以说 deny them. Them 指的就是 the violators， 这些违规的人。后面再接上 service. Deny. Them service.、Mm-hmm, exactly. That's a very good formal way of saying that. Okay, so I think that Taiwan is putting in some very good rules because these rules, you know, fifteen thousand NT dollars is a lot of money. Right. It's amount of money that a lot of people、we'll、can pay. Like, oh. But they they will feel bad about paying it, but they can pay it.、Mm. And so this is a good rule that they can keep for a long time. And I think that that will be very helpful because we need to remember about social distancing and about proper hygiene for a very long time now, even after. We all get vaccinated, right? Exactly. Actually, 打完疫苗之后也是要注意这些东西 Hmm. So, what did you think of today's translation sentences, Elsa? I think they're really useful, and you might see some sentences at MRT stations. Exactly. You can turn your next MRT ride into an English lesson. All right. It seems like that's all the time we have. Let's just quickly review those translation sentences one more time. So, Unit Seven, Translation, June Eleventh. High school students in Taiwan spend an average of 9.5 hours in school per day, which is more than any other country in the world. Students' lives are filled with schoolwork, and this seriously reduces the effectiveness of their learning. Although, although the government began appealing to the public to wear masks on public transportation last February, violations were still observed from time to time. In response. The government strictly implemented pandemic prevention regulations last April that enabled transportation companies to fine violators a maximum of fifteen thousand NT dollars and deny them service. Okay, so we're all very clear on how we can translate those into Chinese. Let's、um, round up now. We're going to be joining you again in a couple of weeks when we're going to be doing another writing assignment. Right. Looking forward to that. But now we have to say goodbye. We do. We have to say goodbye. But we are looking forward to seeing you soon. So for English Digest, I'm Seb. I'm Elsie. And we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye.